Hey, Adam, Jeez, why, why do you think they called bumper scary? <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> they come at the beginning, at the end, like bumpers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Alex, you're a marketing guy. Do you like that design behind Paul? Does that, that sweet logo thing look pretty cool <laughs> to you? <laughs> hey, I forgot to hit the record button. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's, that's really professional, isn't it? <laughs> it? Well, this is a professional podcast. <laughs> I met her in a parking lot and was handed two little Yorkies. And the only person I knew that knew Yorkies was Paul. So I called Paul. <laughs> <and> said, Paul. <laughs> Sweet Talk is a weekly 20-minute podcast brought to you by the Continuing Education and Workforce Training Division of Idaho State University's College of Technology. Find us on Apple Podcast, Spotify, and SoundCloud, and subscribe today. Now, it's time to get started with Sweet Talk. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Sweet Talk, our weekly podcast here at Idaho State University's Continuing Education and Workforce Training. I am Paul Dickey, one of your hosts. I am the Video Instruction Manager and Apprenticeship Coordinator here at Sweet. And as always, joining us is Raylan Price, our Interim Director, Raylan, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great, Paul. It's a nice, drizzly, beautiful day. It is a nice, cloudy. Drizzly, beautiful I think day. we're we're in our first spring, which has followed. We we've, we've had I don't know if it's second winter or first winter still, but I imagine next is, week we'll be going back is, into winter. Is that like first breakfast, second breakfast? I like first breakfast, <laughs> second breakfast. Yeah. But you have first spring, first winter, first spring, or full spring, and then we go into second winter. Yeah, until we finally yeah. get to spring, right? All right. All <laughs> so I it's just is, teasing. It's just teasing us. Uh, all, all I know is I'm from New England. I I, I love the weather here. <laughs> yes, it's awesome. It is. It's a beautiful Friday. So, and uh, we have Angie Wilhelm with us. How are you, Angie? I'm doing really well, thank you. I'm surprised that Paul didn't introduce that as first coffee, second coffee. He is the oh. connoisseur <laughs> in our department. Um. <clears throat> As you know, most of the time, if you've listened to us, we film on Friday, so we're heading into the weekend. Um, for those of you who receive our catalog in the mail that outlines the courses we will be teaching for this semester, you may have noticed the cover this year and the very interesting nice. class that was on the cover. And if you said, hey, what's that? What's Nia? Well, we're going to have a conversation with that instructor today. So joining us today is Sally Hagman. She is a faculty at ISU, uh, in ISU Social Work Department. She is also our NIA instructor. Um, welcome, Sally. Can you take a moment to tell us about yourself in the class? Sure. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, so I have a very diverse background, and I am a very kinesthetic learner and kinesthetic person, and I'm interested in connections between mind-body practice and sustainable health sustainable movement. Um, so I came across Nia back in 2017 and um, it really wasn't intentional. I was working with a life coach and I was telling her, you know, I really need to move. I need something to do to move. And she's like, you got to try this. And I was like, nope, I don't exercise in public. Nope, not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and so I decided, okay, maybe I'll try it. And one day I was like feeling adventurous. So I downloaded an app um, and there was a, a routine on Nia available and I started doing it once a week. And I was like, Oh, this is, yeah, I got a little bit of a workout. It feels different than traditional workout. And I've always been a mover. I've been doing insanity workouts and, you know, going to the gym and running and walking and biking and all of that. So I was like, this is going to hurt. And I'm like, it doesn't hurt. Hmm. <laughs> So I started doing it once a week, then twice a week, then three times a week. And then eventually it kind of took over my seven day routine of exercising and I wanted to take it to the next level. So at the time I was living in uh, Baltimore, Maryland, and I decided to do what's the first level of training to teach is the white belt training. So Nia follows the belt system as in martial arts. So from white belt all the way up to second degree black belts and then becoming trainers. Um, to train teachers to teach. So I did my white belt in 2017 um, and, you know, completely fell in love with the practice. And then I also did a um, individual mentorship teaching with a black belt teacher in Baltimore at the local studio there. 
Um, so after I finished my training, I decided to start my own class. So um, in Maryland, I actually started a class at the YMCA um, in Catonsville, which is kind of a suburb of you know, Maryland, um, outside the little outside the Baltimore area. So I was doing that for a while. And then once I graduated with my PhD in social work, I um, got a job at ISU, <laughs> came over to ISU and decided to bring Nia over here. So my one of my trainers, actually, because I continued my Nia education as well. So I have my my second level of training, which is the blue belt. And then I have my green belt training, which is also the art of teaching. So those, they kind of come in, in, um, in together with each other. So the first level of training in, is in, in NIA is really the joy of movement. And then the second level, the blue belt training is about the joy of relationship or intimacy and intimacy with yourself as well as with others. So with your body, your mind, emotions, and spirit. Um, and then the teaching belt, of course, is how do you then deliver the promise of Nia, the movement, the music, and the magic of the experience. Um, so when I came to ISU and I came to po my Pocatello and this area, there's there was no other Nia teacher that I could find. So I was like, I got to get this started. <laughs> <laughs> so I started teaching for the Get Fit program, and it was a wonderful experience. Um, I think that it brought a lot to the university. And recently, you know, there was an assessment around budget and all of that, and the Get Fit program was ended. Um, it is transitioning into something that's going to be offered in Reed Gym. So if students are interested, I know that they're offering yoga classes and Zumba, and they may be offering a NIA class, depending on how that goes. But I approached the continuing education workforce program, said, hey, this might be a great fit, you know, um, and so um, started teaching this uh, session. We started, I think, January 17th was the first day, and I've had probably 10 or 11 students come to experience mm -hmm. this. <laughs> and really, it's it's been wonderful. I think that students have been excited about it. I think they're learning a lot about their bodies, about how to move in a different way, in a non-traditional way uh, of exercise. So the way I structure the class is really um, kind of in four week segments. So we work with one routine and for every routine, we set a specific focus and intention. Mm -hmm. So we're working with the routine now called joy and the focus is joy of movement. Mm -hmm. um, and our intention is to really sense that life force vitality in our mind, body, emotions, and spirit. Um, and in Nia, we use 52 movements and there are different energy personalities. So that includes the dance arts, the martial arts, and the healing arts. So in the mm -hmm. dance arts, we're using Duncan dance, modern dance, and jazz dance. Oh. In the healing arts, Feldenkrais, Alexander Technique, and yoga. And then in the martial arts, we draw from Aikido, Tai Chi, and Taekwondo. So it's not that we're masters of each of those, but we draw from those different energy personalities to then create different movement forms that are sustainable in the body long term. So that's a very long answer. That's really cool. <laughs> so what does the movement of Nia look like? Uh, like, do you incorporate all of those different types of movement together or are they like separate, but like in a routine to where you're moving from one to the next or... I have to come to a NIA class. <laughs> you, you really have to, ex, you know, experience it to to really get it in your body and to feel it. So the philosophy of NIA is a, is really about doing it your body's way. So there are what we call katas, which are collections or um, combinations of movements of the fifty two movements that vary. Routines are kind of like a book. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end. And there's a cycle where we warm up, we get moving, and then we go into floor play. Not floor work, it's floor play. <laughs> <laughs> so there's different combinations of these 50 new moves in, in the way that, um, like I said, the best way to describe it is like a kata. And those patterns are then repeated in different ways and brought back in the theme of the routine as we go through the warm-up cycle to get moving and then our floor play and step out. Um, so definitely there are Nia routines that are focused on just the 52 movements. So figuring out the form and freedom for your body's way. And I always tell students like, you can look at me, but definitely tweak the movement so it feels good in your body. If it doesn't feel good, then change it and tweak it to make it feel good for you. 
And Nia, the beauty about Nia as well is it can be done in a wheelchair. It can be done if you're recovering from surgery. It can be done, you know, just sitting in a chair. There's actually, you know, chair Nia. There's another form of Nia that's even more gentle called moving to heal. So people who have been diagnosed with cancer or other severe illnesses can actually take Nia classes that are even more gentle on the body. Um, there's also levels. So we start with level one, which is closer to the core, level two, a little bit further, and then you'll level three, which is not sustainable. And love my level three can look different than your level three. So it's really personalized. It's really getting you to be awareness of aware of your body, aware of the sensations of your body and what is sustainable for you in the long term. Right. Um, so all ages, all genders, all, you know, Ability types are welcome. Children are welcome as well to try Nia and do it. I've had a lot of you know students actually ask me, can I bring my 16-year-old daughter? I'm like, well, I have to check on liability with that. But, <laughs> but yeah, you know, it really is welcoming to, you know, all different um, abilities and level fitness levels, um, as well as someone who's never gotten off the couch before. So um, it's really something that if you're if you are open to it and wanting to try something different that you that can bring and generate joy, um, that's really and it, the the goal is not the outcome like oh, I want to get fit. It's really like what are you experiencing right now? How can your body feel good in this moment? And the moves are really designed. They've been researched, you know, over time to fit the body. Um, and it was, Neo was founded back in the eighties, like interestingly enough, but it didn't come, I didn't come across it until later. And the founders that created Nia did not want it associated with like this hardcore aerobic, you know, like no pain, no gain mentality. They really wanted it more incorporated into mindful movement. Um, and so I think now Nia has grown internationally. There's Nia teachers in Saudi Arabia and China and Israel, all over Europe, mm -hmm. all over the U S all different levels of training. Um, and with COVID, I think Nia has been very um, kind of creative in terms of offering classes via Zoom. So I actually also offer a class on Zoom on Saturday mornings for my Baltimore students. Oh, uh, nice. They wanted to stay with me. So 7.30 in the morning, <laughs> <laughs> I'm up, you know, it's 9.30 there. So it's 7.30 here. So we're doing Nia on Zoom and we just do it once a month right now. But, you know, that varies and it's been a lot of fun, but I really enjoyed being able to offer this to, you know, the Pocatello, you know, Idaho Falls community as well. And I think uh, so far the student response has been really happy. I've had students ask me like, are you offering another eight week session? I was like, I don't know. We have to see how it goes, you know, uh, that's um, great. but. So you said like, it's not like this hardcore no. aerobic, but have you noticed like in yourself and others who've taken these classes, what does their fitness level do? You know, does it increase their fitness? Even oh, though they're not yeah. doing hardcore work, um, mm -hmm. does it trim and tone and all those things? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We have Nia sit-ups. Okay. <laughs> it's kind okay. of fun. So depending on what fitness level you are, you personalize it. If you want to work to your level three and really push it to more the anaerobic, or if you want to stay in the aerobic, which would be your level two, or if you're just starting out, you're not feeling that well that day, like level one. So it really is about being present in the moment. So I've noticed like my heart rate, I get at least 30 minutes of cardio. And like, I, you know, I really wow. have to push it to get my cardio level up. <laughs> okay. So if I'm doing my level three and I'm really out there and I really want to push it, I can do that. Or if it's a day that I'm not feeling that great, like I'm getting over a cold, you know, or whatever, I can stay at my level one and I still get a good workout. So it's, it's kind of hard to answer your question because it's so personal to, to the individual. Mm -hmm. So when they step in, if they're already a seasoned, you know, exercise or been doing this for a while, this is a different way of moving your body. So then I would cue that I would suggest, you know, why don't you try your level three, see if you want to push it. Or if you're not feeling, if you're tired that day, say your level one or your level two, you know, so we have the three levels of movement and the three planes of movement. So if you want more intensity, you're staying in the low plane, really using those lower body muscles in the middle plane, kind of using the core and extremities. And then in the high plane, really reaching out with the upper extremities. Hmm. So com a combination of those and the, the katas themselves are designed to bring the student up to that level. And then like slowly we warm up and then we do our get moving and then we do our, you know, our floor plate and cool down and step out. So it, it's very individual. So for me personally, like I said, I have noticed that 
oh, you know, I'm checking my <laughs> my app here. It's like, oh, wow, I actually got a serious workout and I was having a lot of fun. So I didn't really notice it, you know, like if I'm on the treadmill, but I still go to the gym, I'm doing the Stairmaster. I'm like, okay, you know, it's like, okay, how many minutes have I gone? Like Nia, it just goes by really fast because I'm just enjoy really enjoying what I'm doing. And it doesn't hurt. Like for me personally, it doesn't hurt my body. And the same thing again, like I communicate to students, like if this hurts your body, tweak the movement so that it feels good. Like, how can you do this seven days a week or two times a day or whatever, and not feel like you're hurting your body that you can sustain this over time and regular exercise really like you definitely have to have those rest days. Like you can't go to the gym, do a hardcore workout and then go run a marathon. It's just the body isn't designed that way. But with Nia, you can do it more than once. There's Nia teachers that teach like 20 classes a week. You know, there's one I wow. met teaching 27 classes a week. And I'm like, wow. Ooh. <laughs> that's a lot. So, and are they hour sessions or 45, yes. 45 minutes yep. hour? It's, so Nia can be adapted. There are 20 minute sessions of Nia. Like there's five minute dance breaks that we have. Um, the class I teach is a full traditional, what we call classic Nia class, which is one hour. So I usually start class two giving students a little bit of education and we do change the focus and the intention. So we focused on joy of movement for the first class. Then we start with the base, focusing on your base. What do you notice in your feet, in your toes, how you're stepping? Are you stepping leading with the heel? Are you stepping with whole foot? What feels good to you? And then we move up to the core of the body and the spine. Now I've had a lot of students tell me they've had spinal injuries or they have lower back pains. It's like, well, sense that. Notice what feels good and how you can move your spine so it doesn't hurt, mm. right? And then we move into upper extremities. So in the four weeks, I, that's how I do the first routine. And then in the second um, half, we switch to another routine and we'll actually be focusing on the 52 moves. And it is it can be a little bit more intensive depending on what where the student wants to take it. But I think repeating a routine for four weeks really gives the student a chance to get it in their body. So they're not like in their mind the whole time concentrating on the choreography. <laughs> sure. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. what do you say, Angie and Paul, we need to have her come in and teach us a five minute dance break. I <laughs> think, I think I'm thinking Raylan, it may be really great for the mental health week to have oh, her come in yes. so that, that we can amazing. reconnect. Yes. That's great. Great plan. So I have a question, Sally, we're right, we're getting a bit low on time. We will take a minute to discuss our classes here in a second, but you did mention that you also teach Nia, um, that you have a website for Nia mm -hmm. um, outside of it. Can you give listeners and viewers uh, that particular uh, resource on where they can go to find that website? Yes, definitely. So I'm going to send people actually to the main NIA website, which is nianow.com. So that's where you can actually sign up for um, two weeks free to like try a class online, see mm -hmm. if you like it. There are students I've, I've met that don't like the online. They like to be in person because it is different. But if you don't have access and you can't make it right now, that's a good way to try it and see like, oh, maybe I want to try it in person. Because honestly, that's what I did. I was like, let me try this you know, the, the video, the app, and then like, okay. And then I was, I was hooked. And I'm like, Hey, I'm doing this in person. <laughs> so it's a good safe way. And like I said, there's, there's all different kind of time. If you only have five minutes or if you have 20 minutes, those routines are available. So the neanow.com website is the best place to go. And then you'll be directed to um, kind of the Nia on demand website where <clears> you can access those. But the Nia now website is really where you can get the background information about this more information from about the founder, Debbie Rosas, um, and uh, more information just about the NIA philosophy. So it really is a workout, a practice, and a lifestyle program that's designed for sustainability in the body. So that's a, a, a great place to start. That's well, nice. thank you so much for being on. I, we could have talked for, I think, another hour on this. <laughs> um, 20 minutes goes by very, very quickly. Uh, for those of you who may be interested in taking Nia through Sweet, you can make sure you check back or any other fitness class. We offer Zumba and other hobby classes, community classes, and workforce training as well. You can see our offerings at cetrain.isu.edu. If you're looking for Nia specifically, you can just search for NIA or Nia in that search bar there. Um, Paul, can you wrap this up for us? I, I, I can wrap us up. Um, <laughs> Sally, thank you for being on. Um, 
before we wrap up, I'm not kind of understanding. I don't get, I don't get the picture in my head because you, you've talked about like disciplines of martial arts. Uh, mm -hmm. You said a little yoga. You even said dance. So I, I, I'm trying to picture this in my head on exactly, you know, how it's done. <laughs> you gotta try it. <laughs> you gotta try it. Now. And... com. We need to uh, go take a look. <laughs> All right, I, I meanow.com. I... I'm gonna. I'm I... gonna. After this podcast, I'm gonna go on just to because uh, it, it sounds like there's so much involved in this, and I'm intrigued with the with the uh, the uh, accomplishments being uh, oh, um, yeah. acknowledged by the belt program, like it, you know, like a martial arts program that yeah. that. Because it, it seems like that's a nice way of um, having an incentive for progression. Um, yes. And, yeah. So uh, I'm, thank you so much for being on today. Yeah, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm kind of really intrigued by this. Yeah. Um, um, Raylan, thank you as always. Um, I really appreciate um, your contribution. And Angie, I can't do this without you. <laughs> And um, Angie had already given the website. I'm going to give it one more time, cetrain.isu.edu. If you want to check out our other offerings, uh, you can also email us at cetrain at isu.edu or give us a call at 208-282-3372. And this podcast is our way of connecting with our community and letting our community know about our offerings and other community activities. So if you like this podcast, please like, share, and subscribe. We do appreciate it. And be safe out there.